إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال أيضا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we send salam and salutations upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I advise you as I advise myself with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions over and over in the Quran when he says both to mankind as a whole and he also says in specific to those who believe to have fear and to have consciousness of him that whatever you do whatever situation you might be in know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of what you do know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is well aware of you in every condition and Allah subhanahu he reminds us in the Quran when he says ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum o mankind be fearful and be conscious of your lord and more specifically when he talks to the believers you and i and he says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqu Allah O oh, you who believe, be fearful and have taqwa and have consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This consciousness and this taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can give many examples and talk much about it. But we just came out of a time wherein we were supposed to have been trained in taqwa. We were supposed to have felt the sweetness of taqwa and that training and that school and that time of learning is none other than Ramadan where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in the Quran that he has mandated and prescribed fasting for you that you can be from amongst those who have taqwa so we spent 30 days learning and being from amongst those who exemplify taqwa. And we're going to talk a little bit about how we exemplify taqwa in the later portion of this khutbah. But I want you to understand a very important point that we know and we recognize in our regular everyday lives but it is also something that is very very important and pertinent in our lives as a muslim when you send your child to school they learn they get exams they get tested and then there comes a time in the year three or four times per year after x amount of months where the child is given a report card and the parents are called in for a conference with the teacher the parents are called in to discuss what their child has done for the last few months how they have pre performed on their exams their papers what have you 
discuss the behavior of their child. And so the Muslim in their life when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should have a similar system. There will be a day where there is an ultimate accountability, where you will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your record will be laid out for you. And the book will be pres presented before you. And Allah describes it in Surah Al-Kahf that it contains everything. Nothing was left out, big or small. That's the ultimate accountability. But there is also a time after every period that we go through where we as human beings, we as Muslims should reflect. The same way before the month of Ramadan came, many stood here, many lectures were given, and people reminded the Imams, they reminded us to prepare, to have a plan. After the month of Ramadan, I'm saying and I'm reminding myself and you, reflect on what you have done. Judge yourself based on what you plan to do in Ramadan and what you have accomplished throughout the month and where you find yourself now after a week has elapsed from the month of Ramadan from the end of the month of Ramadan. Where are you at this point in time? And the believer, many of them will want to know, was my Ramadan accepted? Did my actions benefit me in any way? And so there are a few ways that we can tell whether or not our actions were accepted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ This is the first sign of goodness, something that is praiseworthy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. He said, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the people who do good, whatever good they do, and they are fearful, about what they have done, knowing that they will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talking about people who do good actions, talking about people who perform acts of ibadah, talking about people who pray and who fast and who give charity, and they are still fear, fearful in their hearts, knowing that they have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This fear, this Thinking within yourself, what have I done? Have I done it well? Will Allah accept from me? This is a characteristic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises. Knowing that you have done actions and being fearful of their acceptance, knowing that you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sign of goodness, is a sign of something praiseworthy. And so this is one thing that if we have it within us after the month of Ramadan, that we have fasted and we have stood in salah and we have made dua and we have given from what Allah has give, blessed us with and given to us. And we are still worried about our position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then this is something praiseworthy. We see from amongst many of the companions, even those who had been promised in their lifetime, Jannah, that they were still fervent in their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they were still worried about have they done enough. And they were given the glad tidings of Jannah while they were alive. So what about us? Should we not be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our position with Him? Another sign of good and another sign of acceptance that we can take and that we can look for in our lives after the month of Ramadan finished, where you stood and you worshipped and you prayed eight rakah or 20 rakah and you recited the Quran and you listened to that which was good and you avoided that which was bad and you were active in your worship, after all of that was completed and the day of Eid came and now we are some days after that, what happened to that worship that you were doing? 
What is the condition of the worship that you are doing now as compared to in Ramadan? When you were trying to make sure all of your sunnah were prayed, and you were trying to take on extra acts of worship, and you were standing in the night, and you were reciting the Qur'an. So now what is your relationship with the Salah? What is, the, what is your relationship with the Qur'an? What is your relationship with giving Sadaqah? What is your relationship with all of the acts of worship that you had been doing during the month of Ramadan? If they have stopped completely, and you see that the person in Ramadan is different from the person that you were that you were on the day of Eid, then you need to do some reflection and you need to fix some things within yourself. But if you see that Ramadan has made you a better person now, today, that you were not doing certain things before Ramadan came, and now that Ramadan has come and left, you are doing many things better. You are engaged in more acts of worship. You have stayed away from sins that you may have been engaged in in the past. You find yourself in a better condition. Know that Ramadan has done you well and you have taken advantage of the month of Ramadan. Ramadan serves as a means and a method to teach us how we should behave outside of it. Ramadan is not 30 days where you put all of your effort in and then when it is finished You go back to the way that you were Because in Ramadan you felt what it was like to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In Ramadan you were taught what the essence of taqwa was Because you fasted And no one knew whether or not you were fasting except you and Allah no, no one knew the strength of your fast. No one knew if you broke your fast or not. To what level you were fasting except you and Allah. And you didn't break your fast. Only because you know that Allah is aware. You know that Allah is watching. This is the only reason that you didn't break your fast. Because if you had... There were many opportunities to do so. You didn't have to starve yourself. You didn't have to stay away. No one from the humans would have known if you had done it in seclusion or in private. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to stay away. And so you did. And because of this, you have tasted what it means to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah taught you through Ramadan what it means to be from the muttaqun. And it is upon you and it is upon me to after Ramadan continue in that path. It shows us a sign of success when we continue to do good even after the month has ended. And recognize we're all human beings. And it is not realistic for us to say, after Ramadan, we're going to be able to continue at the same level that we had been performing at during the month of Ramadan. But what should be your measuring stick is that the person who you were at the end of last Ramadan, and the person that you are at the end of this Ramadan, they should be two different people and they should be different for the better. Even though you may have gone back a little bit on what you were doing, your acts of worship, things of this nature, you should still be better than you were at the end of last Ramadan. You should have made some improvement so that you are in a better state and this should always continue the believer should never go back to the position that they were in when they started they should always be increasing even if that increase is small one of the signs of acceptance and one of the signs that is praiseworthy in the quran 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us about a group of people and the ayat in which this are, these are mentioned is very famous and we know them well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He praises a group of people and He says that they are those who their reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is this. تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ That these people with this characteristic, they are visited by the angels. And they don't have any fear. And they don't have any worry. They don't have any, uh, any scaredness or any fear within them. Rather, they are given the glad tidings of Jannah. And these are people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا They say that their Lord is Allah, meaning that they accept Allah as their Lord and their Rabb, and they worship Allah, and then they're steadfast. That's their reward. The act of being steadfast is something that seems so easy. Rather, it is actually quite difficult and we need to work on it. But if you are steadfast and if you maintain the good and worshipping Allah and fulfilling that which you need to fulfill, then your reward is تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ Allah removes from you all of the fear, all of the worry and anxiety, and you are given the glad tidings of Jannah. So when Ramadan ends, when any period of increased worship ends, we should be people who remain steadfast. Remain on what you were doing. If you were praying, continue to pray. If you were, if you were fasting, Continue to be a person who fasts throughout the year. The recommended times that are, that are there within the month, be steadfast in what you were doing. If you were someone who was giving charity and gave lots of charity in Ramadan, or at any other time of the year, then be steadfast throughout the, uh, throughout the year. If you were someone who went above and beyond in any act of worship, then ensure and try as best as you can to be someone who remains steadfast in their acts of worship throughout the year. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's reported to have said hadith which is reported by Bukhari and Muslim, that the most beloved deeds to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala are those that are consistent, that are most consistent even if they are few. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us goodness in this life and in the next. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who do good actions on a consistent basis and that He accepts from us all our acts of worship. Alhamdulillahi wahda wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiya ba'da amma ba'da. We're always concerned about our position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're always concerned about our return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with so many things that are going on in our world, in world politics, in many different countries, wherever they may be, many people have a heightened level of concern. What I want to remind myself and you of is this. Yes, there are many things that are going on. Yes, many people are talking about various uh, you know, signs that we're in the, day, the, the last of the days and the signs of the day of judgment. And these are all things that we need to be aware of. But this is one point that I want to remind myself and you of. When you return to Allah, you are accountable for what you have done. Whenever you return to Allah, you are accountable for what you have done. So do not wait until you see certain things. Do not wait until certain things occur in your own life to turn back to Allah, to make right with your Creator. View things that are happening 
throughout the world. View the scope of world politics and what everyone is talking about and what everyone is concerned about. View the natural disasters that are occurring throughout the world and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from you. Turn your life around so that whenever you reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at whatever time you return to your Creator, you have returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are in a state of obedience. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ do not return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that you are in a state of submission to Him. Allah subhanahu he says, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ What is this yaqeen? He says, worship your Lord until there comes to you certainty. What is the certainty? Death. Whenever your death comes to you, your time for doing good has ended. Your reckoning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be from that point. And so, while many people love to concern themselves with things that are going on around them, it is important that you actually take action based on the things that are going on around you. When a reminder comes to you, change something within yourself. When you see something happening, the believer is someone who doesn't wait for things to happen to them specifically. Rather, they take lessons from that which is presented to them. Which is why the Qur'an is filled with amthal. And the Qur'an is filled with stories of people that came before us. You don't have to experience yourself in order to make a change. Rather, this is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He did not allow us to experience hardship and difficulty and tragedy on a large scale amongst ourselves. Rather, He has shown it to us and has given us an opportunity to change ourselves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify our hearts and our actions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify the affairs of our brothers and sisters all across the globe. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save and to protect and to grant victory to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant aid and assistance to our brothers and sisters in Sudan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant aid and victory and assistance, His aid and victory and assistance to our brothers and sisters that are being oppressed and that are being slaughtered and that are being filled with so much ghulm and oppression wherever they may be. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst the people of Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us of our sins. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reunite us with our loved ones in his Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands you in the Quran when he says, Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala abdika wa rasulika wa nabiyina Muhammad. Wa arda Allahumma an khulafaihi al-arba'a, Aba Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali, wa ansair al-sahaba, wa nittabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin. اللهم انصر إخواننا المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا المسلمين المستضعفين في الغزة اللهم انصرهم بنصرك يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقوموا إلى صلاتكم